This little booklet we call a passport. If you have ever traveled to foreign countries, there is a high probability that you own one. When you look at the cover of it, you will find one of the 199 existing designs, as that is the exact number of countries issuing passports for their citizens. All uniquely designed varying in colors, writing and pictures. Although all of them have the same number of pages, are from the same or similar material, some of them are much more valuable than others. How valuable is yours? Let's have a look at the passport winners and losers. From the old days there was a need to travel. That is why many nations throughout the years came up with various kinds of official papers, with the purpose of allowing passing somewhere. Chinese were one of the first. As we know, they are experts in identifying their citizens. Therefore, it is not surprised that as long as 200 BC, they have been already issuing identifications, including details such as age, height and bodily features. The word passport comes probably from medieval Italy, where it was referring to a piece of writing, allowing people to passaporto, which means to passport or harbor customs. Moving to these days and to the booklet we carry around today, which is a result of many conferences and meetings mainly in Europe, which throughout the 20th century have resulted in a worldwide recognized document. Now let's see the rankings of the passports. We will start with the losers. As there are many ways to measure the value of a passport, for the purpose of this video I'm using the Henley Passport Index, which seems to be established and has accurate data. And without further ado, I'm giving you 3 seconds to try to guess which country in the world has the worst passport, meaning their citizens need to obtain a visa or in some cases are even prohibited from traveling to other countries. So what is your guess? It comes as no surprise as the country is Afghanistan. Holders of this passport have easy access to as little as 27 destinations out of 227 considered in this ranking. The comparison with the number one country is a cruel difference. Slightly above the last place we can find countries like Syria, Iraq, Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia or even Nepal. Citizens of many nations around the world are facing real struggles when it comes to traveling. We can observe many cases of one country prohibiting the entry of certain nationality. For instance, Georgia refuses entry to holders of passports issued by the Republic of China. Or the majority of Arab countries, as well as Iran and Malaysia, ban Israeli citizens. Pakistan is going even a step further with explicitly mentioning that these passports are valid in all countries except Israel. Therefore, be grateful if you do not have to face these issues and you are lucky to hold one of the following passports. So let's move higher in the ranking. Most of the European nations are leading the board. However, the size of the nation is not a rule for better passport. As in the top 30 ranks we can find small islands like Barbados, Bahamas, Seychelles and more, all having hustle-free access to more than 150 travel destinations. Meaning number of places where you can enter for general tourism, visa-free, visa on arrival, ETA or e-visa issued within 3 days. With that in mind we can finally announce the winner. And I would like to know your guesses again. So, the lucky citizens in the world live in Singapore with access to 194 travel destinations out of the 227. Wow, so as I mentioned, the comparison is mind-blowing. Just a few destinations behind are Japan, Germany, Italy or South Korea. Majority of Europe ranks above the number of 180. Link to the whole list is in the description. But did you know that you can buy yourself a so-called golden passport, which could widely expand your options if you are holder of a weak one? But before talking about that, let me just quickly show you these two maps. This map is showing the validity of passports around the world. It seems like half of the countries are issuing them for a 10-year period, whereas the other half only for a 5-year period or even less. And this other map shows the color of passports around the world where it is also interesting to see the difference around the globe. So what the hell is a golden passport and how to obtain it? 
Apparently it is a citizenship that you can acquire by investing in a certain country, either by buying property, creating jobs, donating to a fund or other means. So if you are not happy with the options that your citizenship gives you and you follow these criteria, you need to have clean criminal record as well as legitimate source of funds, you have to maintain the investment usually for 3 to 5 years and at last you have to visit the country at least once and take an oath of allegiance, simply swearing allegiance to the country. Oof. However, after that you can legitimately gain their citizenship with the advantages when it comes to travel options, tax optimizations and more. It's interesting option, isn't it? But with high cost. If you are interested, this is the list of all countries offering this option, including the US, the UK or Switzerland. Wow, that was a lot of information. I hope you are quite a passport expert now. The last thing is a fun fact at the end. Did you know that more than 5 million British passports are printed each year? One every 2.5 seconds. At a secret location in the north of England. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.